All right, darling, it is hot. <laughs> I can't believe this is October. I mean, it's over 90 <sighs> degrees today and it's been dry for mm -hmm. over a month. Mm -hmm. So that's why our poor colocaceas. Yeah, look at these they babies. Just, oh my gosh, they're saying, hey, mm. we think it's hot too. They're trying to conserve a water by folding up and turning yeah. away from the sun as best they can. <laughs> Do you blame them? I don't oh blame them at all. But we're going to pull all of this up. Wow. But you know what? Look at the Dusty Miller. It look good. It look real good. We're just going to continue to keep it. We're gonna, okay. At this point, we're going to see how long we can. This is the third uh, fall season that this will have been living. And they have been doing great. Yes. So what did you think about the performance of everything else that was in the garden? Oh, the, the, the only thing that the, the heat has really uh, suffered from is the impatience. Okay. They, they just said, hey, it's too hot and the colocasia don't like it either. Yeah. But everything else seems to be, uh, but even though the uh, Joseph's coat is got, its leaves are curling too, if you can see that, because yeah. it's too hot. So we'll see. I know they've been, it's irrigated, so it's been trying to get water. We'll see how dry it is. All right. But it's time to pull them up. This is always the hard part for me. It did so good. Now they got to come out, right? Now they've got to come out. Should be pretty easy though, because the ground I'm sure is dry. Now we're going to go ahead and dig these up because we're going to try to save them Good. for next year. Right. We will show you how to overwinter the colocasia a little bit later in the show. Yeah. It's a real good root system. There we go. Get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Oops. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Very nice roots. Wow. It was very happy Why here. Fibrous nice root white system. root system. How about that? Real healthy. Yeah. Well, the Dusty Miller have grown a little bit big, and we're going to try to trim them just a little bit for the for, for the next season. We can do that with pruners or scissors, since these are very small uh, stems on these. Either one will cut them. So I'll give you those. Okay. I'll and I'll take those. these, and we'll just literally just trim them back just a, a couple of leaves. Just a couple. Yeah. See about. Not that much. Okay. When you're pruning, you're going to go to a, pla a point, a point of growth. So you come down how far you want, and you pick which set of leaves you want to cut just above, and then you cut, and that makes them shorter. All right, Chris. This year, besides the Dusty Miller. We're going to be putting in our some some bluish purple pansies. Okay. We're going to be putting in some red dianthus. I like those. And we're going to add. Now we started off with daffodils in here. Well, I'm going to we're going to try some daffodils again. Okay. And these are called Tay. -tay <laughs> one of the first daffodils to bloom in the spring. Okay. So and they're smaller. So we're going to plant them up on the, because we planted them the very back last time. We're going to plant them a little further in the bed, just on the outside of the Dusty Miller. Okay. And we're going to plant them in groups of three. Here's one, two, three. And why do you like the group of three? Ah, uh, because it's odd number. Odd number. One is not enough. Two looks odd. Three looks, odd numbers look more pleasing to everybody. Okay. So we'll, we'll plant them in threes. And with the right side up too, right? That's correct. Yeah. When you look at the bulbs, you'll see there'll be a point on one end and some dried up roots on another. The dried up roots are the roots. So you plant that side down and the, the uh, more pointed side up. They multiply Get very the, well yeah. and uh, a lot of people will pass them along. All right, now it's time to plant them. Okay. And really, as you can see, our trowels yeah. have measuring on it. So if we can get them to four inches deep, that's really all we need. Okay, four inches deep. This helps. 
I want to keep them in a tight cluster of three so they'll make some kind of impact. So it's easier to dig a bigger hole that's large enough to set all three of them in together. All right. And then cover them up. You know, there are a couple of earthworms in there. That's good. Um, what we're going to do now is put down fertilizer. Okay. And that will help the bulbs some and our new planting. Okay. And what kind of fertilizer are we using? This is a complete fertilizer and it, more importantly it's a slow release and I'm going to go ahead and fertilize the Dusty Miller also. Okay. You don't need a whole lot. Really the best thing to do now is to put some mulch, a layer, a small layer of mulch down okay. on everything. I really only want to put about an inch or, or, or two, mostly I'm trying to go for an inch of mulch because there's already some mulch on it and we don't want to put too much mulch down because pansies don't like the crowns of their plants buried. And we are um, mulching first before we plant because if you've got this all planted with these very tiny tender little uh, plants and you t try to put mulch carefully around them, you'll end up burying them and breaking them and it won't be good. So it's just a lot easier to mulch first and plant afterwards. So next we're gonna put out our dianthus. Yeah, this is a new plant for us, um, dianthus like cold weather, okay. they don't necessarily bloom in cold weather, but they'll be gorgeous through the fall. But if it does get really cold, they'll stop blooming, they'll still stay green, then the spring they'll bloom again. We only have 12 of the dianthus and they're supposed to be an accent to the pansies, so we'll set those out first and evenly space the 12 plants that we have. Bring that one over here just a mm -hmm. little bit. And we're ready to plant. Okay. To plant in mulch, you move the mulch out of the way. You dig your hole. Yes, and as much as this is irrigated, it's dry. Tickle these roots a little bit. And move the dirt and the mulch back over. And it's finished. These have good root systems on them. They do. And they got some nice blooms on them. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for cooler temperatures to bloom. Luckily, we have water because the ground is so dry and we've put these nice moist roots into the soil. I want to try to surround their roots in the existing soil with some water, so we're going to try to water them a little bit. Okay. All right. Now, we are ready to plant the pansies. Okay. We're mostly going to fill them in, and we probably will not hit any of the daffodils because they're going to be lower okay. in the ground than the rest of these. And it doesn't matter to plant over them because the daffodils will grow up through pansies. Okay and bloom. It's good to know. The pansies have a very low crown on them. So you want to make sure you don't bury this crown because that will smother the uh, pansy. So again, move your mulch away. Dig a small hole. About this. You see this is only like an inch and a half deep so we don't have to go very far. And then Push the soil around it and be careful with not burying the crown. I tend to like to put pansies just a little bit high rather than low. Air on the side of being a little too high because of the crown issue. Okay, well, we kind of got a red, white, and blue theme going on this year. And in the spring, when the daffodils come out, they'll be yellow to add to the mix. So we got our primary colors and red, white, and blue. What more can you ask for? Thank you, Joel. I can't wait to see what this bed looks like later in the season. So let's get some water on these plants and let's get some water in us. Thank you much. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.